socialist alternative. And those 430 sales of a socialist paper uh, quite a few decades ago, I was going to mention, but I don't know whether it makes me as proud as what happened today. We've got hold of our new paper, and it's such a fantastic paper. If you haven't got a copy, you won't be able to leave tonight without getting a copy or without getting a subscription. But it was fantastic going to my old stamping grounds in Glee, here in Glee, and seeing how it went down in Glee Point Road, corner of Glee Point Road and Wigan Road. And I first started selling down there 40 years ago, 1973, used to have to share the spot with the Communist Party, either Eric uh, Aarons or uh, Brian Aarons um, and a few others, but they didn't last after a few decades. <laughs> and I had it for myself, but I can't remember selling the 15 copies in 90 minutes that I sold today. So that made me very, very happy. Well, red flag serves many purposes, many political purposes. We know it's a paper that tells the truth, tells you what's happening in Australia and in the world. It champions the struggles of the oppressed and it stands for socialism, clearly, unequivocally for socialism. But it also has another purpose. It organises us. It organises the resistance, the opposition, the movement that will bring down capitalism. Any of you who've been around for a while would have read your Lenin and, and know this was this fundamental thing that Lenin said. His paper provided the scaffolding for the movement and Red Flag is going to provide that scaffolding too. It's a fantastic step forward for us. Politically, it's just right. Great articles, great layout too. Some people have asked me, is this the result of the RSP merger? No, yes and no. Uh, Ex-RSPers like me are certainly delighted, but it's a logical step forward of the socialist alternative leadership. Another excellent decision by that leadership. As a former RSP member and a former DSP and SWP and resistance leader, even a resistance leader. <laughs> I have a long history with revolutionary socialist publications. It was something we stressed, something we focused on. Socialist alternative doesn't have quite as long a history and they don't have all that uh, written uh, focus. They're very much an oral tradition, a very strong oral tradition of talking to people, recruiting them. In fact, socialist alternative comrades are the best recruiters and the best arguers for socialism that I've come across in 50 years, almost 50 years in the revolutionary socialist movement. They're great on stalls, great at meetings, explaining revolutionary socialist ideas, convincing new people. My tradition from the 60s was more the written word, although we were activists then, and rather wild activists in the early days then. <laughs> we had many magazines we began with, and many efforts we, we tried. Names like Keep Left, Socialist Review, and so on. Until direct action was produced. That was produced in September 1970, as we started getting organised properly from resistance. And that's the front cover of the very first issue of direct action. It made a big splash. As comrades now know, I sold 430 at Melbourne, which was quite an effort.